Welcome to the Intern Whisperer Live, the show all about internships and how to excel and do well. Reminder, listeners, you can call us live on the air. The phone number is 407-582-2906. You can also chat with us online through Intern Pursuit's Facebook live chat. Coming up on this episode of the Intern Whisperer Live, end of the semester, looking for internships, sign up with Intern Pursuit or contact Isabella at isabella at interpursuit.tech. Our guest, Karen Figueroa. Business Development Manager with Affiliate manage, Manager. So how can you find Intern Pursuit on social channels, your favorite ones? Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, you can look for us there. You can also find our Intern Pursuit game on Facebook and Twitter and look for that website coming out soon. Uh, we will be on Steam. The game will be on Steam. And then you can watch us live on Facebook and call us live on the air. Again, that phone number is 407 407- Five eight two two nine zero six, and you can also chat with us online. So I know how well our guest is loved, and I'm hoping that I see some chats coming in from a few people over there at Affiliate Manager. Well, first off, we have our first patron, Pixel Crawler. Pixel Crawler is a suite of tools that audits, monitors, and historically tracks the pixels implemented on your website. There are strong dependencies built on the consistency and accuracy of the data collected by tracking pixels. And Pixelcrawler will help ensure all the data is being collected as intended. Their website is pixelcrawler.com. Thank you, Pixelcrawler, for being a patron of the Intern Whisperer. So, Intern Pursuit News. We are officially open for business on Intern Pursuit. And so students, you can start signing up on our website, internpursuit.tech, T-E-C-H, and register to get matched with an employer. And for any of those employers that are out there that want to work with phenomenal students, be sure to sign up and become part of our early adopter beta program. Early adopters will get some special perks. So if you want to know more information, you can go to our website or you can contact me, Isabella, at internpursuit.tech. And you can also apply to be on our Intern Pursuit team. We're looking for influencers, brand ambassadors, all kinds of people. So feel free to join us. And so for tonight's guest, Karen Figueroa, one of my most favorite people that I've not worked directly (laughs) with. She worked with Affiliate Manager, but my goodness, I felt like a kinship with her, and I love her to pieces. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me here today. Yep. All right. So you guys, kick us off. All right. Well, I noticed you recently graduated from UCF with a major in advertising and PR. Uh, What do you miss most about being a university student? I miss a lot of things, but Mm -hmm. the thing that I miss the most is definitely being with my professional fraternity. It is on Zeta Phi Eta. My last semester, which was last semester. <laughs> last semester. Yeah. Yeah. Just <laughs> recent graduate. Yeah, I was um, chief networking officer. Mm-hmm. So I handled all the different events. It was professional events, uh, fundraising, volunteer, and social events. Mm. So it was really awesome just having all my brothers and sisters, you know, coming to the events that I would promote. And right. it was for the fraternity. Yeah. And just having them like enjoy it and just spending time together. I have a question about the fraternity. I'm going to throw that one out. So I was really promoting that, and you'll have to tell us the name again. What is it? Zeta Phi Eta. Zeta Phi Eta. And so that's a business fraternity, not a social one necessarily. Um, is there a cost to join that fraternity, like typical ones? It is. It's 200 every mm-hmm. semester. Okay. So it's relatively low compared to other Oh, yeah. Raising fraternity. Yeah, it definitely is. And um, you can talk about that one later, but I do want to give a little special shout out to that fraternity. <laughs> Something else that I have to say I miss about being mm-hmm. a student mm-hmm. is um, the privileges that that you guys have yeah. as students. Mm-hmm. You know, like you're, you, you can. Football tour. games. <laughs> that too. But what I mean more is like in a professional setting, like you can tour ad agencies or. Like, what I did, I toured, I got, I was able to get my fraternity to tour a newsroom, Mm -hmm. and like, Wesh 2 News, which is Mm -hmm. super cool for all the, like, people that are in journalism and reporters, and um, being able to follow people at work, so take advantage of that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 
And there's other, I think, other perks. Aside from vis visiting those places, um, you get special rates when you guys are a student. So you should always yeah. consider joining a professional organization. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know which one you may belong to, but they have student rates generally, and that's a really great way to meet other professionals. You could potentially get a mentor that way and then potentially a, a job opportunity. So I'll throw that one out there also as a tip. Because on student campuses, you have your leadership roles, like what you had. But when you're in a professional association that's outside of a school environment, it's a totally different environment, a totally different game. You should expect that you're meeting all different sizes of businesses, different uh, positions, people that are in different positions there. And it can really help you to develop a strong network. That is really true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, in addition to advertising and PR, I noticed you also double majored, well, double minored in psychology and digital media. Um, how has that benefited you professionally? That's a lot of degrees, Karen. I did not so, know you were like so brilliant. So <laughs> let me tell you guys, I I really really love um, psychology and digital media, but I ended up dropping the psychology minor. There's two reasons. Um, one would be because I felt that I, I got everything I wanted from it, which was to learn about the consumer behavior. Mm -hmm. But I ended up dropping it because I would have had to stay in school another semester mm -hmm. just for one class. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, when, when you guys have the time and, like, the money for it, go do it, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. But I was just ready to start working. Yeah. So I changed everything up, but it worked out in my favor. I, everything that I learned, I, I use it every single day. And so what yeah. was something that really stood out from psychology that you still see that you apply in the business world? Because to me, when I was in my education classes, one of the biggest takeaways is that um, in education, training and learning, adults can only sit for like 45 minutes, and then they are ready to take a break. You know, So in the classroom, in a lecture, typical lecture setting, it's 45 minutes, you need to make sure you take a break, or it needs to be very highly interactive so that a person is no longer um, bored just sitting there. Definitely. What do you think was a great takeaway in psychology? One of my favorite subjects was emotional intelligence. Oh, yeah. Because you have to learn how to talk to people. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, in my field, the, or in affiliatemanager.com, we don't really talk face-to-face. -face. It's more email. Mm -hmm. And you have to be very particular with the kind of tone you're using. And you have to try to sound like you care about the person. And you just have to make sure you, you word your things right and you get your point across. Yeah. So it has to sound friendly. It still needs to sound warm and inviting. Um, you need to use, I don't want to, I'm not trying to downplay this, but um, simple words. And not simple because people are, are don't un, they don't understand it because I often say this, you have to be able to speak to different people that speak multiple languages, different learning abilities, different educational levels. So, you know, the more simple the language, the more easy it is to understand what you're trying to get across. Exactly. Just try to get to the point. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good takeaway. Yeah. And it's your show, guys. I'm just here. <laughs> uh, what were the key differences in your internship experience abroad versus when you interned here at the U.S.? So I interned in Madrid, yeah. and wow. it was, How was awesome. That? It was super cool. <laughs> but um, one of the biggest differences from interning here in the States is that um, while I was in Madrid, they kind of gave me a task and just said, go with it. You have a mm. week. And <laughs> that was it. <laughs> so... Um, what I had to do, yeah, I had a creative internship with them, so I had to find restaurants that needed advertising mm -hmm. and partner with them. And I took pictures of, for example, this one restaurant called Fish Muller. Mm -hmm. yeah. I went to the restaurant, and we had a photo shoot for the food. Mm -hmm. It was super cool. I got to eat it after. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, had to, I went back. It was, there was a lot, of, a lot of photos, and I had to pick the best ones, and then I had to edit it to make it look really nice yeah. are you a photographer no no yeah, you are yeah published photographer <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> they actually used all my pictures on their social media platforms so wow that sounds really cool with a camera or the phone i had a sony alpha 6000 mm -hmm. and um the thing is that you have to be you have to use sunlight you know all the light that you can get the natural sunlight that you can get yeah 
But this restaurant had no windows. Oh. So oh, wow. it was so hard. I, I really had to edit that. That was like the most yeah. important part when I was mm -hmm. editing it on Photoshop. So. Did you use lights with it then? Did you yeah. have like, lights inside? I, I had two people helping me and they were like holding up the lights. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Wow. Did well, I can't the imagine the place with no windows. It, w it had like one little window, but the sun just yeah, didn't work out. wasn't working <laughs> out. Hmm. Yeah, so I was just going to ask you, um, did you get the internship through UCF or did you get it through another platform? So go back, going back to my fraternity. Yeah. Um, I, when I joined, there was an active. Her name was Luna. And she was the one that told me about this internship program called Intern Group. Mm -hmm. And for example, like through UCF, which is really cool, you know, yeah, y it's really expensive. But through this outside group, I paid half of the amount that I had to, and I got like two months in Spain. I worked mm -hmm. from nine in the morning until 2 p.m. So it wasn't even like that mm -hmm. much it wasn't time. That yeah. Bad. yeah, so I was able to learn, work with people, and it was a whole new culture, so it was really cool to work on my mm -hmm. Spanish as well yeah. and then enjoy the city. Okay, so I'm on their website, cool. International Internship Programs. It looks really interesting. Mm -hmm. Nice website, too. Everybody looks very Spanish. So, um, they have different lo destinations. Oh my gosh. I was in between London. Australia and Madrid, but um, I did Chile. it was a summer here, so it was winter in Australia. Mm. So I went. <laughs> oh my gosh, so many choices. Bangkok, Tokyo, Shanghai, Dublin. Tokyo would be awesome. They were actually yeah. my first job offer. Oh. Well. New York. Really big places, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so Jonathan, we have to go and follow the intern group on our social feed, too. Will do. Okay. But here in the States, I interned with a nonprofit called Get Aboard and Bar. An advertising agency oh and yeah, affiliate good. manager, and they all—it was—it was great, and I felt like I had um, more of a direction to mm -hmm. go with, and I had more people to ask questions to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was also also going to ask you what advice would you give someone trying to obtain an internship? Kind of give already a few other resources, but just use the school. Yeah, yeah. like UCF gives you so much. Especially in um, the Nicholson, yeah, like we have, they have intern pursuit, and that's how I got two of my internships. Oh, and to clarify for our listeners, the Nicholson School has intern pursuit. It's their special program, and that's what they call their career fair. But it is not affiliated, connected with internpursuit.tech. So when I had talked to Lindsay, who is the head of the intern UCF intern pursuit um, career program. Uh, when I got, finally got to meet with her, that was like my first year. I've been doing, I think, three years now with uh, that program. Um, I went up, so you didn't lock that down, and I did. I secured <laughs> the domain name and the website and registered the company. And she just laughed at me, and it was <laughs> like it was super good. She was really cool about it. She said, yeah, we'll have to partner up. And I'm still trying to get FaceTime with her. She's so hard to get FaceTime with. She is super busy. Yeah, I know. I know. But I really like her, and I think that she had a really good attitude. You know, she was very positive. She didn't – she's very supportive also. So anyway, that was super cool. Yeah. So that brings us on to our next patron. Um, Artistry.io is a product customization tool for e-commerce stores that increase revenue, customer trust, and business efficiency. Artistry's robust product customizer allows business owners to sell personalized products in, his, in an existing e-commerce store and automate the processing of custom orders. Their website is artistry.io. Thank you, artistry.io, for being a patron of the Intern Whisper Live. Um, so you cur you've curated a website that showcases samples of your work, such as your video and uh, graphic design pieces. Would you say displaying your work like this has become a standard in the field of media and communications? Yes, definitely. Any classwork that you make is a potential um, digital digital piece for your portfolio. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I say that anytime you have an assignment, you turn it in, and after you get it back, you get, you know, you feedback. Might not, yeah, yeah right. you might not have done the best. But with your teacher's help, 
you know, you can fix it up and then post it on your portfolio. Mm-hmm. It's a great way to show employers just um, how creative you are or your writing skills. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I know I've heard that being promoted, like, suggested and putting it on, you know, websites, your pieces of work, but I just wasn't sure how common that was. Yeah. I think it's really common when uh, some somebody doesn't have work experience, yeah. and that's your starting place. That's what you have to put up there. But when you do the internships, you get a lot more work-related um, pieces yeah. that you can put up there mm-hmm. and really demonstrate, oh, this is what I've learned in the working world. This is what I did in, in an academic environment. And they're totally different because, like, you had to turn that around in a week in Spain. Like, that's what the expectation is. And that sometimes there's not a lot of do-overs. You get to do some editing. As you well know, editing takes a lot of time, but sometimes you just have to go, okay, I'm putting it out here. That's how I learned Photoshop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> there's got a week. <laughs> yeah, and you got to turn it around really, really fast. It's a lot of YouTube videos for me. To yeah. <laughs> about Photoshop. Definitely. <laughs> if you don't have Photoshop, what do you do? Um, I don't have Photoshop. I think there's a website called Canva. Oh yeah, com. I use Canva. Yeah, it's free. but I don't think I can edit a picture that I've done. I don't. I didn't try it on that. Luckily, they had you know like all the Adobe uh, Creative Cloud. So yeah, I was, I was able where to you just were. Use that. Yeah. Yeah, that would make mm-hmm. sense there. But like I, I have limitations. I don't have a, a Mac, nor the Adobe stuff. <laughs> Yes, so I was also going to ask you about your work with AffiliateManager.com, one of our employers. You originally started there as an intern, but how have your responsibilities changed since you become a become a full uh, part of their full time team? So now I have my own clients, which yeah. is really cool. Um, before I I actually mostly helped um, with like. Uh, I guess I still did prospecting, which I, I still do now, mm-hmm. but everything that I did, I would always, it would always get checked by somebody else. Right. Yeah. And um, I did a lot of um, like manual transactions, which isn't really that hard, so it's kind yeah. of like intern work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and now, now I'm able to, they trust me enough to look at a website and tell the affiliate what to do and how mm-hmm. to make it better, how to optimize it, so that it's um it's all about the user experience. So how people feel more comfortable with it, yeah. and the way that it's positioned, you know, like it'll eventually help getting more sales. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So our, our listeners, we've had um, a couple of people on before. Uh, Diego's been on here before, and so has uh, Claudia. We've had her on here before. I think there was somebody else. I can't remember who. Um, Damien. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, hi. Hi, Damien. Sorry, forgot you. There. Really sorry. Anyway, Damien. Yeah, (laughs) Damien came on, and his show was super popular because we had people writing in, and I think that may have been the show where somebody called in also. Anyway, um, we need to make sure any of our new listeners know what affiliate manager affiliate manager.com is because we're supposed to say the whole thing um what is it that affiliate manager.com does so because when we say affiliate you know we need a common definition for everybody so we understand yeah so we definitely we work with different merchants um i believe it's uh, over 60 plus merchants that we have right now and we help by looking for people that, like influencers or bloggers or mm-hmm. coupon sites that promote the things that they are selling. Mm-hmm. And um, with everything that an influencer or blogger has on their website, we give them a commission percentage of the sale mm-hmm. so that we're helping both the influencer and the merchant. With Sounds like a pretty good deal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can That's you do that with service-based businesses? Because I don't sell a product. I am actually, you know, a service based. So I I don't have this account, but uh, Tony Robinson. Oh yeah. We have him as one he of our clients. He sells books though and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, he's really big. 
Mm-hmm. Tony Robbins. Do you guys know who Tony Robbins is? That name sounds so familiar. Yeah, our previous some of our previous guests have referred to him, mm. and he is a motivational speaker, mm. really, really famous. You should look him up. Um, by the time you finish listening to anything that he in 15 minutes you'll feel like you're flying on top of the world because there's nothing you can't do you are super uh, superman superwoman whatever but a very good very good speaker really motivational and he didn't start that way so you should go check him out but that's uh, interesting because he does have books to sell so that's true yeah yeah and it is a service base but mm, yes and no so i get it i get it (laughs) So what qualities would you say a person needs to have to work in in the fields of communication? Communication. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, communication is key, (laughs) for sure, yeah. So (laughs) verbal, listening. um, Honestly, it's it's like um, it's the key to success in in this this field because you have to have communication with the client or the Mm. affiliate, you know, through email or in person. So immense amount of strong writing skills. Yeah, when, and like how you said, you have to be simple yet tactical. So you mm-hmm. have to get your point across, and also as well like in with your coworkers as well, because you know you have to be friendly, and you have to show respect, and that's the way you learn through them. Like I, I've learned so much through mm-hmm. my coworkers, like mostly. Uh, like Joanna and Ali and Sandra, I've learned so much from them. Yeah, you guys are a really strong team, I know. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. I miss seeing you guys down at Starter Studio. Yeah. I miss going too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you guys went totally remote, so very different work environment. Instead of being in a traditional office, you guys have gone out so you can travel the world and yet you're working. Yes. Mm-hmm. I started working while I was in Colombia, so that was super, super awesome. Because <laughs> my family wasn't able to come to my graduation, like yeah. most of them weren't able to, so I was able to spend some time with them and work. So it was, it was great. Do you find that challenging? Because I don't know, remote working, you have to be very structured, I think, and very uh, diligent about making sure okay i'm at work so i can't go out and <laughs> go to the beach <laughs> <laughs> no yes definitely and um some strong coffee really helped okay really helped. okay must be good in Colombia. i'm not a coffee <laughs> drinker but i trust you yeah i was also going to go into your major again advertising and public relations how important would you say creativity is in that field creativity is key um there's there's um there's so many different things that are trying to get your consumer's attention yeah. that you have to find out like ways or why or how an individual is going to pay attention to your product or service. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Like, I mean, creativity can, can come in like many different ways. So for me, when, in what I do, I have to be very innovative while looking for new prospects, you know, because yeah. you know we can't be keep we can't keep looking for the same keywords. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, also, like when I said optimization, I have mm-hmm. to look at different websites and optimize them. So usually I look at it from like a user experience. Mm-hmm. So when I mean that is like like the data preparation that they have, the ease of. How quickly it loads yeah, and how you can quickly navigate. It loads, how you navigate. And I mean, everybody doesn't want it to be hard to make a purchase. Yeah. And it's if you can't find what you're looking for, then you're just mm. going to stop looking for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's what, that's what I do. If I can't find it, I email somebody. And I so making sure it's like user friendly. Yes. Yeah. And to me, what means user friendly now means it should be as simple as a two year old. That, so I think that's really why so much of our websites have gone uh, highly visual mm-hmm. with just simple um, graphics so that it speaks to anybody. Because if a kid, can, a child, can truly pick up the phone and figure out, oh, this is how I, they watch parents, how to purchase something, don't for one minute think that they can't figure that out. And they can be watching either the screen or they're really looking at the images that are on the phone. So I think that that's probably key. And to me, what creativity would be is being able to take a complex process or a complex uh, set of words and make it into one symbol so that everybody knows what you're supposed to do. So we'll use the example, a universal symbol of bathroom, right? Mm -hmm. 
And how do we know what is a bathroom in any country of the world? It requires that we would have just silhouette, right, a figure of a man and a woman, um, and then they put those on the bathroom stalls, or at least on the bathroom doors, and now I know in any country where I go, I can find that. So it has to be something that can speak to masses around the world very easily. And that takes a lot of creativity. I think that's super hard. Yeah. And when you say optimizing, what does that mean um, in affiliate manager.com world? It, well, for example, if I can't find what I'm looking for on mm -hmm. the You website, said keywords, so. Yeah, so, um, I'll, I'll, for example, I use um, Precious Moments, which um. is one of the clients that I have. If I don't see a banner visible or I can't find where they're promoting it, I send them an email and I... Do you mean like when you're looking like across the all... Oh, on the, on the website. I gotcha. Yeah, I mean, they, sometimes they do have social media yeah. as well, so you do have to check that. But um, sometimes like they... Maybe they made a, a review a long time ago, mm -hmm. so there hasn't been generating a lot of sales. So then you go ahead and ask them, like, hey, um, do you think you can make another review and maybe put it on top of your website? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Or just, yeah. like, somewhere where so more people can see So a testimonial something. So it sounds like you're really having to look at how the company, I'll use myself as the example. Um, one of the things that we're working on is how do we keep taking our brand up another level so that people do notice it. And video is key, so... You know, some of the things I was talking about with the team is changing out our um, homepage to just like a video. So it would be more engaging, like really short. Um, that would be one way. But if we don't have our logo on every single page or somewhere where it's a constant reminder in our social content, um, that could be one way we're optimizing. And I was talking with Jonathan earlier, and we were looking at how we were creating some posts. And you know what? I didn't think about this. Uh, so it's great we're having this discussion. Um, when we create uh, a social post, and we use Canva also, yeah. we should probably make sure that we put our own logo somewhere on that post so that people know that it's coming out from us, yeah. I would guess. And they recognize you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have to use complementary colors with that. We don't use blue no. um, in our logo, but we have to have some type of a complementary background with it. and. Make sure that we're we're branding everything. Mm -hmm. So that would be optimizing, I would guess. So an example of it. Okay, that's good. I'm on the same page with you guys. Yeah. So if somebody hasn't been making a lot of sales, you look you look why? What's why haven't they been mm -hmm. making sales if they made like 500 last month mm -hmm. or last year at this time? So then you ask. What was their promotion that they were doing? Mm -hmm. Was it a the four P's, right? Product, placement, promotion, price. Yeah, so you have to look at all of those things. Yes. Definitely. Got it. Okay. Well, uh, what changes do you, uh, do you foresee in the future of your industry? Oh, that's a tough question. I don't know if you guys <laughs> sit down and talk about that in your meetings. Well, um, Claudia, she actually mm -hmm. sent out this, um, this email from CJ.com, which is one of the networks that we use. And they were talking about Apple's ITP. It's mm -hmm. Intelligent Tracking Prevention. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and um, <laughs> it has to do with first party and third party cookies. Oh. So yeah, with um, all the data that you look at on your laptop and what you buy, what you look, all your information, basically. So oh, wow. Big Brother watching us all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so right now, I believe that we can't use third-party cookies anymore. So it's just first-party cookies. Yeah, I think so. I think you're right. I think I remember seeing something about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So because you have to have permission. That's yeah. why. Yeah. You always have to have per permission. And a lot of the websites, like um, something pops up and it tells you like they're using cookies in this website. Is that okay with you? Yes or no? And then. You click whatever. You're yeah, if you say no, then it reduces the ability to see some of the images that are there. But it also means, I think it means that they can't follow you or they can't track you yeah. as much. 
Mm -hmm. I'm not a, I'm not highly knowledgeable in that area. So with that, I, I think, um, you know, the industry's becoming a lot more transparent with all the consumers, which is which really good. Like advertising should be should be transparent in order, in order for people to trust what they're selling. And um, something else that I think ha is going to change is that a lot of the influencers that we're looking into, like they're not really like um, like Kim Kardashian, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. they're more like micro influencers that have um, like a nice niche mm -hmm. of followers so that there's more trust that's mm -hmm. built between. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to ask a couple of questions. Do you remember where we met? You were referred to me by somebody. I remember my friend, yes. Yeah. And so that's how we met originally. And I, I messaged you, and mm -hmm. I was like, hi. Mm -hmm. I would looking for an internship. <laughs> yeah. And so that's how we met. And then one of the other things I wanted to um, ask you about is what was, what would, because I'm recruiting for affiliate manager right now, we're going to be doing that. What would a typical day look like for an intern coming into affiliate manager now? Because you're on the opposite end. It's, you're still, it's fresh enough for you to remember, but now you would be the one that gets to help train. So what would it look like? So at first, um, how I started, they, they told me what affiliate managing marketing is. Mm -hmm. Affiliate marketing is. That's what I had. I had no idea. And um, I went through a lot of like trainings with different people. And at first, they didn't give me that much work to do. Because so there's a lot to learn about the company, about the industry, yeah. the clients. But they right? also want to see who is going to ask for more work. Because I noticed that was a, it's kind of a difference between our other intern and, and myself. Mm -hmm. Because every time I was done, I'd be like, hey, can I help you with something else? I'm done. Or... Is it, does anybody need help with anything? Like, please, like, mm -hmm. I'm here. <laughs> and um, so be proactive would be a, definitely a piece be of advice that you would say. And um, I think that just shows that you're interested in learning and you, you're really like, mm -hmm. you really want to be a part of the company. Um, I had a lot of like, not, they were pretty simple tasks. And it mostly had to do with like uh, calculating the the amount of sales from each affiliate and putting it on an Excel. So sheet. math skills. Well, Excel <laughs> did all the math for okay. me. Okay. So I just had to like put it in all together, make sure it had the right years, months, days, mm -hmm. and then send it to Claudia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was. I miss Claudia too. <laughs> Is she in the still in Florida or is she? She is. She is. She actually moved to part time. Okay. Because she's following her dream. You know? uh, mission work. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is she in? Well, I don't want to ask where she lives, but still over there on Seminole County. So. Yeah. Okay. Great. <laughs> I'll reach out to her. <laughs> so, um, what would uh, aside from making sure that you get really involved in the company, what other advice would you pass on to somebody that's seeking an internship? That they already have the internship, or that they no, they're want. just starting to look. Okay. For internships. So I would definitely say to work on your writing skills, and because everywhere you everywhere you're, you'll find an internship or a job. Like you have to be good at writing, and you have to be good at speaking. Have confidence in yourself, and put yourself out there. For example, like go to job fairs, for example, like intern pursuit, or there's different career services at UCF, yeah. for example. Yeah, career services. Right there, they, they, ha they help you find internships mm -hmm. if you can't find one on your, on your own. Mm -hmm. The only thing is that they give you homework with it. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, but that's A lot of research, helps. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and go to different, like for example, in, in my field in advertising and public relations, there's uh, meetings that they have all over Orlando, for example. Meetups. Add yeah. to Orlando. They, they have meetups, yeah. and they talk about things that are going on in the industry. They You can find a mentor there, like you said. Yeah. 
Um, and for, do you guys know what ADD2 is? Um, AD2, the number two. So ADD2 is a professional association for anybody that's under 30. I think it's under 30. It might be under 35. But mm -hmm. anyway, you're from college to uh, 30 years old, we'll say, and it's a PR uh, professional group. Um, you get to learn a lot, but what they do when they get together, one of their big campaigns is they adopt a nonprofit organization, yeah. and then they uh, help with all of the branding. If It could either be a rebranding or a branding to make sure that they give that nonprofit a gift of a complete, maybe it's a logo update, mm -hmm. but then they have to have print and you know marketing collateral. They'll do everything from the copy to the... Um, photos to videos and really make it a campaign that's going to help bring a lot more awareness to that organization. I think that's an amazing professional association. So add to, um, you guys should join that one. Hmm. And yeah. there's more. Yeah, look into it. There's, there's definitely more. If, you, if they don't have an event going on, there's somebody else will. Mm -hmm. yeah. And meetups always have lots of events that you can go to. And so I've, that's where I've met a lot of people. Just pick anything that's of interest to you because it could be video production, it could be photography. Um, I was started going to one on podcasts, and that's how I started getting into this. And then when the opportunity came up for me to have a pot, you know, our own show here inside of Valencia College, I went, okay, well, I'll do it. And the gentleman that was running the podcast meetup, he came in and he helped me get things set up. So you don't know how those types of uh, relationships can help you either in the short term or long term. So mentoring doesn't mean always long. Uh, mentoring, it can be like just coffee and you get some really good advice out of that one time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we are coming into um, kind of the tail end, but I want to go and ask some questions because I want to explore the working remotely again. Um, it's something that I see my own company doing. We, we do work remotely from the sense that everybody gets to work from home, but we get together once, twice a week usually. It's twice a week. How do you guys do it at Affiliate Manager? Do you guys get together once a month where it's everybody sees, you, e sees each other and it's team building, or what happens? So we have outings. Okay. I was actually in Columbia for the last one. But Where did they go? What was their outing? I'm so jealous. <laughs> they, okay. They uh, went out to eat uh, to Yard House, and then they went to an escape room. Wow. Yeah. Oh, it was I don't know what the Yard cool. House is. What is it's that? a restaurant. It's a garden Pretty. restaurant on International Drive. What do they have? I haven't been there, actually. So mm. I don't know. It's a little but I heard expensive, it's really though. Good. That's all I know. But they're, they're pretty up there. The yard house. Well, when you don't have to pay rent and everybody's working remotely, you have a bit of a, I would think, a better budget. Mm -hmm. And you can do some things that are going to be, um, you know, kind of special. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's why. Oh, wow. They look amazing. Really good looking food there. A hundred menu items. And it's they serve beer. Darn, I really wish I liked beer, but I don't. But it does look super good. And the escape house. I've yeah. never done that. What was that like? I don't know. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Have you guys done an escape house? Um, Always wanted to. I've oh. never done one. I but really they got out it. in time. They got out in time. They did. Yeah. What no, was the time like limit for it? I, I'm not sure. Mm. But they had, they, you know, they posted a picture after. Yeah. And yeah. they all had, like, good signs. They, they, <laughs> they actually escaped in plenty of time. Yeah. Well, what is an outing that you have done? We went to a hockey game. It mm. was super cool. We have hockey? Yeah. Solar bears? We still have solar yeah. bears? Yeah. Okay. We, w we witnessed a fight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got, like, our own little, little section. So it was really cool. It was just all of us there. We got some food and some drinks, and we saw the game. Okay. And Nitro came. So I got a picture with Nitro that day. Okay, so that's the mascot for the Solar Bears. No, no, just that's, that's UCF. No, I don't know why he was there, but... Okay, <laughs> never mind. There. Yeah. Okay. So um, the other thing about working remotely, what's the downside of it? Because to me, I'm very social, and I would like to be able to see the people I'm working with. And so do you feel like you're really still connected to the people when you work independently like that? So I ask a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. So I'm always bothering someone mm -hmm. so I don't really I still feel like I they might not be in front of me but I do feel like close to them because I feel comfortable mm -hmm. being able to 
ask them a lot of different things. Sometimes so it's just like through chat, it's email, through chat, email, yeah. email, phone. Like it yeah. takes forever to type <laughs> stuff like that. I want to hear their voice. Well, actually, yesterday um, I had a co-working day with um, my one of my co-workers, Joanna, and then today I also had a co-working day with Ali, mm -hmm. which is, that was, it was so nice. So you get to have FaceTime with people. Yeah, it was really cool. And we used to have uh, co-working days as a group when we were at Starter Studio. Right. But now that we don't have that, I remember Mike and Karen talking about starting something else like this, but I don't, not, I'm not sure about that right now. But, um... The cool thing, though, is that we get to go on, like, an outing once a month. Okay. And it's always something different. Like, they told me before they went to a cooking class. Oh, that would be fun. Yeah, that is really cool. They went to this place, like, Top Golf, but it wasn't mm -hmm. Top Golf. I can't remember the name of it. And, um, I don't know, maybe... Okay, now, Top Golf doesn't do cooking classes. No, no, they were there That was for a food separate out outing. Yeah. yeah, I gotcha. Okay. <laughs> and, um, I don't know. I, I want to be able to... I don't know. I was thinking about doing something like uh, volunteer work yeah. for us. Social. Something that's got a, a social spin, a volunteer, where you're giving back yeah. to the community. Yeah. That would be a good thing to do. That's something that um, in the past that I've done as a company uh, with the people where we did like a food drive. Um, we've also gone and prepared um, meals for Ronald McDonald House. We did a road cleanup one time. And then we had just like a potluck and we all got together. Yeah. yeah, those are fun. Yeah, I have to get that back into the schedule too so that we do those things. When I was a chief networking officer for my fraternity, I can't remember the name of it, but it was something house where we went in and cooked for these people. It and wasn't Ronald McDonald no, House? No, it wasn't Ronald McDonald House. It was... Meals on Wheels? No, it was another one. I can't remember the name of it right now. Um... I really can't remember, but it was really cool because there was, like, five of us, and we cooked. We made tacos, tacos mm -hmm. and rice and beans for everybody, mm -hmm. and it was really nice. So, I don't know. I was thinking about trying. Maybe it was one of the shelters? Yeah, it was one okay. of the shelters. Okay, all right. Then that would be what it is. All right. Well, um, do you guys have any last questions that you want to be able to ask? Um, how often do, do you, did you guys have to meet for your... Uh, what's it called? The fraternity. A lot. It's <laughs> demanding. <laughs> yeah, I know it's, it's like really demanding. Job. Yeah, but it was really cool to start building, you know, like that connection with everybody, mm -hmm. and um, like you're always learning. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very demanding schedule. I know <laughs> that she was she was always busy, but um, out of that fraternity, there's been others that ha I've worked with, and yeah. Khalil, who was a host on the show with me. And Abby, now Abby wasn't from the fraternity, but it was Khalil Adina, and Jerron, Adina, Adina well. yeah. There's been like uh, several others that I have had the privilege of working with. So I'm very thankful for that. All right, well, we're gonna be getting ready to say to Valencia College, thank you very much for letting us use your radio studio. We're over here at Valencia College Community uh, Campus and it is the East Campus and we love you Q. We got to see him today before the show started. Yeah. Um, we're going to be leaving MixLR, so starting very soon, it's going to be Valencia College Radio. So this is the last week of MixLR, and everybody will be able to follow us live on fa Facebook and also follow us live on Valencia College Radio. So um, we do a little tradition here where we do a shout-out. Um, so, Melanie, you go first. Um, I'll give a nice shout-out to my sister. All right. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> um, shout out to my family, um, you guys, and our guests for being here. All right. And my shout out goes to Karen. Thank you for being our guest. Also to our listeners, um, I took a little peek, and Mike's been uh, listening in. Just so everybody knows, Mike is there. Mike Nunez is the uh, CEO of AffiliateManager.com. So Mike's there. He liked it. And, I mean, I already – it isn't up here, but I already know that he, he is there. There's one eye. That's Mike. Um, and I also want to say thanks to you guys. Um, we're getting at the end of the semester. Some of you guys are moving on to other opportunities. Some of you are going to be staying. 
I want to say thanks to the software team, all of the other people that are the game team, and all of the other people that have made Interim Pursuit continue to grow. So thank you very much. Uh, Corey, you want to say? Nope. And Corey says thank you to everybody else. He loves being behind that camera. So he's making all of these little snippets, and we use that to promote the podcast. So it's going out there. So how can you contact us? You can contact us at info at in internpursuit.tech. Call us at 321-422-2166. And you can look for us on Facebook, on Twitter. You can listen to us live on um, facebook.com. Make sure that you follow the intern, uh, intern Pursuit. And as we close the show, we want to thank you for listening. Good night. <laughs>